So today we're taking a look at Retable.io. Now, I've spent about 24 hours with the system right now, so I have a few thoughts. Now, stick around till the end if you want to find out if this is the alternative for Airtable that everybody has been waiting for. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alex. And yeah, here on this channel, we talk about anything and everything. Low code, automation, AI, Airtable, Retable, all kinds of tables. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, let's start off with the UI UX of the website and the builder. So generally speaking, the website is nothing to, you know, kind of like call home about. It's OK. There's no major promises, online spreadsheet, online forms. They they're kind of OK. This particular part gives you an impression almost like there is a Gantt chart and there is no Gantt chart. It doesn't say anything about a Gantt chart, but the image kind of alludes to this, like, you know, tasks being in a Gantt sort of style. It's OK, like in terms of website, I can't complain. Could be better, I feel. But let's just sign in and see what the inside of the system looks like. So now that we're in, let's take a quick look. I'm just going to kind of like uh, peruse here. What do we have? We have just some resources, workspaces. Yeah, it's all kind of like pretty standard stuff. There's some news roadmap. I like it. I like it. I like the fact that they are not hiding it somewhere. It's like all well in front of us. OK, let's just start from scratch. Now, again, I'm just starting from scratch because I want to show you some of the weird picky things that I'm coming up with. So first of all, I have to choose a color and none of these colors are my favorite color, which is gray. When I have to do some serious work on a database, gray isn't like it's not trying to, you know, get my eyes out. It's just nice. It's clean, black and white. I love it here. I have to pick from one of the colors of the rainbow and which is annoying. But that's just me being a little bit nitpicky. Let's start with a CRM that I created just for the purposes of the demo. And again, I haven't fully created it, but I just want to showcase some things that are a little bit annoying when dealing with the UX UI of Retable. First thing that I want to kind of like look into is the general look and feel. And the general look and feel is extremely similar to that of Airtable. So if you're used to that, this is very similar. There are, of course, a few things that are different, but this part, you know, it's basically Airtable. It's the same thing. The only thing that I'm kind of like not digging is the fact that I can't make this smaller or larger. The lack, especially here when I have my views, I can't search through them which is annoying. So you can basically have a bunch of views, but not a huge amount because, well, you won't be able to find them easily. Also, you can't group these views into like folders. Maybe that's coming up, but right now it's not there. Slightly, let's veer off from that sort of view experience to, again, I mean, creating a new table. That's all well and good. Very similar to how Airtable stuff works, but Let's just create a new table called suppliers. Let's then create a new column. I like this experience. I kind of do because immediately as soon as I create a new field or column, I get all the options that I need to right from the get go. But one thing that I seriously don't like is the fact that when I want to choose a column type, I have this mega menu and Honestly, it sucks. Why? Because especially for somebody who's brand new to this, I have to dart my way around to find like the number field, which is kind of like right here at the top. I get the appeal of a mega menu in this area. It's cool, but without a search or as soon as I press here, I need to be able to start typing. Like I need to quickly type text with my left hand, like T E it should filter this menu because otherwise, you know, you kind of like sitting there and looking for the field that you want to find. I love the fact that they have requirements on every field so I can make an entry in this particular field required. By the way, you're calling it column, but you're also calling it field. Pick a naming convention, guys. So, but anyway, I digress. Requirements, 
on every field, requirements of entries to be unique, show a star instead of real data when publicly shared. How cool is that? Awesome. Whoever thought about it, thumbs up. Single line, multi-line, fill cells with default values, use a validation rule for cells. They paid attention to this particular bit. And of course, the options change if you decide to change the field type. So that's all pretty cool. But again, the lack of being able to search quickly through column types is annoying. There is another thing that like it generally feels like this is a lighter version of Airtable. There's like space to breathe. But I want to take your attention to something else that is a little bit concerning, at least at this point in my testing. It's the fact that I haven't got much data. And when I move from table to table, it kind of takes forever. Like it's not snappy. It's not like I have to wait for the system to get started. What will happen if I have 10,000 rows in here? I dread to think what would happen, honestly, because if it's behaving a little bit slowly and I'm talking about milliseconds for some people, it might be not much, but for me, it makes difference. If it's behaving like that right now, what's going to happen, you know, four or five years down the line with 10,000, 20,000 rows of data. You know what I mean? Now let's talk about how quickly you can generally build a base on Retable. And generally speaking, I have no complaints other than one major complaint. It's almost criminal how bad this is. This is linking tables between each other. And here's what I mean. First of all, let's take a look at one example here. I've got a list of orders. So I have order one and I also have a link to the company. Now, first complaint here is the fact that when I create a reference to another table column type and I call that field something, Retable just decides to add an extra like company name from companies. No, thanks. I just want it to be called company. So that's problem number one. That needs to go for sure. People need to call the title of their field, whatever they want. I don't need a constant reminder. The next thing that is almost criminal is the fact that if I go to companies, there are no orders. So it doesn't create backward links. So if I want to check on a company's orders, I simply can't. I can just see all of its fields, any editing history, and that's it. I can't see the freaking orders of that company, which is very annoying. It almost defeats the purpose of having this system. As if this wasn't enough, let's just say that I actually want to look at this company's data from within an order. You would think that you can double click or click inside of this place where it says Acme. No, sir, you can't do that. If you double click, you can just choose another company. And then again, why is the window so small? Could it be a little bit bigger? Could I fit more metadata about that particular record? Yes, but nah. Okay, fine. Even like this, it's all right. Other than this issue with linked fields, everything else is basically cool. I don't mind creating databases like base schemas on this platform. All right, so let's talk about views. What sort of options do we have there? And I usually like to pay attention to the form view, the amount of things that we're expecting from companies such as Retable, Airtable, SmartSuite, and forms, form views is very, very low. Like, you know, we don't expect them to be jot form or type form or any form builder level form view, but it would be cool, right? So let's take a look at how the form builder works here. I have already created a form view during testing, but let's just create a form view and what we have is not a bad looking form, but what are some of the special things that we can do here that might differentiate it from Airtable's form builder, for instance? Well, not much. To be honest, we have these form settings over here. You can hide them. You can show them. We can change the color of this particular thing from blue to black. A little bit useless. Extended cover image. So... Okay, fine, hide retable logo. What most interests me is what can I do with my fields? 
So for instance, here, this is just an order a field, which is a related field, right? So the order detail record that we can create through this form will be related to an order. There is no filtration. I cannot filter these results by any means. Not only that, if I move on to the next field, let's say product, I cannot make this dynamically required or dynamically hidden or shown basic things when it comes to form views, form builders. Basically, it makes Airtable's forms look amazing. <laughs> so this form builder, this form view, it's okay, but it would not work for a lot of basic use cases. And I can't really say that it's great. Now, as I said before, we have some basic views. We have list view, card view, map view, and all of that. But sadly, we don't have any kind of like timeline view other than the calendar view. There's no Gantt, there's no timeline. So yeah, that's a big minus. And of course, a big issue, like I said before, is the fact that we don't have a search for our views. Neither can we group the views so that it's easier to just like say, okay, these views are for this purpose. These views are for that purpose. Especially if Retable is expecting us to take the database seriously and add a bunch of records and use it on a day-to-day -day for a small business. So yeah, that's it in terms of views. So let's talk about fields and what kind of options we've got there. Now, as I kind of briefly touched on this before, we have a decent selection of fields. There are some interesting ones that I particularly like the fact that they exist. And that is like a vote field, a QR code field. It's nice to, to be able to QR something or like turn some values into QR useful occasionally there's geolocation which is kind of cool because you can pinpoint on a map the location of something on a map and then it displays it nicely very nice yeah it's it's kind of all right i'm not really complaining much let's see what kind of formula experience we get because that's also a big thing especially if you're using things like retable any kind of low code database builder you gotta have a really good formula experience because you need to manipulate your data in various ways so here it's very similar to airtable i kind of like it so things like concat you see i'm just starting to type in the function and it auto completes it very nice gives me the description plus an example excellent big thumbs up great job and the only like minor thing actually there's two minor things first thing is the documentation of these formulas which looks like this and to me smells a bit like the guys were lazy a bit to create a properly nice page i guess it basically does the job and it's very okay now one thing that i might be missing i haven't super gone through this with a fine tooth comb but it's missing a little bit like of array functions because a lot of the times we're dealing with lists and it would be nice to have some functions that manipulate lists in certain ways. Let's say we have a list of clients and we are linking them back to some other order or I don't know. It would be nice to have some kind of function that brings us the unique clients in that list or displays that list in alphabetical order. So like sorts that list and such. But all of this really kind of pales to the fact that there's 137 functions, so much stuff, especially in math. Wow. Like they are really doing a great job with that. That's it in terms of fields and functions. As I already said, I wish we had like a search thing because I don't want to dart my way through picking the right column type. I just want to type it in quickly, enter, go. That's that in terms of fields. Now let's talk about some special features of Retable. And there's some good news, there's some bad news. So the good news is that you have an AI field, GPT. Not sure what it does, but most likely, very typically, it will just create summaries of things and yada, yada, yada. We've seen that before. It's nice to have. Right now, it's still in beta, I think, for Airtable. So not uh, everybody has this. It's nice to know that it's here, readily available in Retable. The good news continue to come. And those 
good news are that we have an automations functionality within the platform itself. Now, funnily enough, this looks pretty much exactly how Airtable's automations side panel used to look like when they just launched it. It was like this little side panel, just like the one that we see right here. And you could build these automations like right here on the side. But here we have like a nice little pop-up, which I enjoy. I always tend to like the subtle changes of the screen. I don't like big changes, kind of like how we have it right now with Airtable, where you're trying to build an automation and like the whole screen changes and you're now like so focused on automation. It's not my favorite thing. So here it's a little bit better. You can call your automation whatever you want and you can give it a description. But here is the bad news. And the bad news start with the fact that you can have a trigger and then only one action which is annoying. Not only do I want to have more actions, but I also want to be able to filter or have conditions rather about when each action should fire or shouldn't fire. That's an annoying thing about this, but it's nice to know that at least you've got automation runs. And speaking of automation runs, it's nice to talk about add-ons. With Retable, you can add add-ons. In other words, you can bump your storage limit, you can bump your automation run count, you can up your row limit. Okay, this is coming, but it's just nice to know that, you know, if you reach some limits within Retable, boom, you can just get an add-on and you don't have to rely on the mercy of uh, the platform. Again, we've hit some limits occasionally with Airtable, for instance, they are soft limits. Here, it's nice to know that the platform is giving you the option to just like slightly bump your expenditure per month instead of just jumping a whole level up, you know, from business to enterprise or something like that. So in conclusion, Retable was founded in 2021. And the funniest thing is that Airtable in 2021 feels like Retable in 2024. And generally speaking, as I said before, Retable feels like Airtable Lite, which is a good thing. Does it replace Airtable for me? No, not really. It's still got a bunch of UX UI gaps and it's not really snappy. Do I like it? Yes, of course I do. But I feel like if they were to make all the adjustments necessary in order for it to become like a great player in that arena of Airtable, Smart Suite, and so forth, it would also cost more. And now, I mean, on their website, they've got this, you know, lifetime offer where you can basically get lifetime access for 10 people for about $2.99. Well, if it had all the features, I think A, they wouldn't have that lifetime license offer in the first place. And even if they did, it would cost like 10 times more. So yeah, that's basically it. Those are my conclusions about retable after using it for 24 hours let me know down in the comments below what you think about retable yourself have you been using it for a while what are your impressions do you agree with some of my statements do you disagree and yeah looking forward to seeing you in the next one cheers